Hey, first aid and safety class at Monadnock. How are you? This is Ted McGreer, uh, Ted Shoe and Sport. Hey, Mrs. Condap reached out to me and asked if I could do a little video presentation for you guys about selecting proper footwear and how that relates to the anatomy of the foot and ankle and proper alignment from ankle to knee to hip. Um, and from a running perspective, it really does matter quite a lot. So I wanna take you through a little um, kind of education or what my staff calls a Tedducation on how to select proper footwear uh, for all things walking and running. So ideally what we wanna to try to do when we first think about what type of shoe to get for us is to determine whether we have a high arch, a low arch or no arch. And the best way to kind of explain this to you all is that when the arch collapses internally or to the inside, um, the foot falls inward this way, it kind of turns over. And that's what flat-footed people do. And when the foot collapses downward this way, it acts like a little bit of a spring. When the foot doesn't collapse, it stays pretty aligned. So if you have a really high arch foot, you probably don't have a very flexible foot this way. And the best way to really think about that is that of a tripod. So when you think about a camera tripod, it's perfectly balanced on all three legs. And that tripod will keep the body stable from the chain. So the ankle to knee to hip alignment. So as we look at the foot with somewhat of an arch profile here, you'll notice that some arches are higher than others. In this case, if we look at the foot straight on, you'll see that you could draw a line from the center of the ankle straight up to the knee. And that's what we call a neutral position. So if you put a car into a neutral stick shift, it's straight up and down, much like the foot. Not many people have neutral feet. This is pretty rare to see somebody with a really high arch foot this way. Um, most people, the foot starts to kind of fall. And so when you see that collapsing in, inward, that's what we call over pronation when the foot turns in. And again, we talked about that having a little ability to absorb impact. So a flexible foot that pronates this way absorbs shock. It's like a little spring. A foot that's a really high arch foot like this, when it lands, it lands like a tripod and it doesn't absorb shock. So another way to examine whether the foot pronates or supinates is to have somebody watch you walk. And you can see this line straight up the Achilles tendon shows a very well aligned ankle to knee. Um, this foot also has the tendency under pressure to pronate. And let's see how it rolls inward. So as that foot rolls in and then comes back out, that is what's absorbing the impact of your body weight. Let's try that one more time. You can see the arch collapse. You can see that line right up the ankle. Do that one more time, collapsing right over. So very important to keep the alignment in check for running and walking. So when we talk about a high arch versus a low arch foot, we have to think about what the foot does when it's off the ground and what it does when it lands on the ground. Now, in this case, here's a mold of the exact same foot. You can see this foot is smaller on this side than it is here. This is the foot molded with no weight on it. In other words, not weight bearing at all. When this person steps down on the ground, you can see how much elongation or how much the foot splays and gets longer under body weight. And when you're running, it's a proven fact that four to six times your body weight lands on your feet. So when you have a low arch or a foot that's collapsing, it elongates when you put weight on it. Now a high arch runner or walker, that foot, again, that foot lands very firmly and the arch doesn't elongate because it's already neutral. It's a very stiff, rigid foot. And that foot needs to be fitted differently. So one of the best ways to evaluate whether or not you have a neutral foot or you are an over pronator is a couple of options. You can do the wet test, which basically means step in uh, or get your foot wet and walk across uh, a concrete floor and check your arch profile to see if there's a really high round curvature. Um, but I think the best way to do it is to stand um, and look at a full length mirror uh, with your head straight out and not looking straight down because if you lock your knees then your arches take shape so the best way to do it is stand in front of a mirror and stand on one foot and if the, the foot that's on the ground if you basically bend that knee you'll feel the foot getting flexible or if it's nice and stable if you have a flexible foot that means you moderately pronate and incidentally almost 90 percent of people do so pronation is not a problem but it can lead to alignment issues and Basically, what that means is from a running perspective, there are shoes to help people keep better alignment from ankle to knee to hip. And so it's all about the alignment from the ankle. 
Um, when we think about a proper shoe for somebody who has um, some stability issues or a, a flexible foot, uh, we want to look at a sneaker um, that basically has some support in it on the arch side. Now, the best way to show this to you is if you go to, this is the, the lateral side of the shoe, but if you go to the medial side where the arch is, you'll see this product right here called a guide rail. And that guide rail helps force some pressure up on the foot and prevents it from wanting to turn in. Now, if you have a high arch foot and you put on a shoe this, which has this guide rail in it for somebody with a low arch, essentially this could start to overcorrect you and make you fall off the side of the shoe. So it's really important that if you need a stability shoe for somebody with a low arch, that you should only put a low arch foot into this. If I have a high arch, that guide rail is gonna push on my arch and it's gonna make me turn my ankle. So very important to get the right type of shoe. A couple of nice little cutaways that help explain what a stability shoe looks like is if, if we look at what we call the midsole of a sneaker, and you can see this is the nice soft foam that's under your foot uh, in any shoe, and almost every single running shoe in the world has a midsole unless it's a considered a barefoot type shoe. Um, this midsole foam is like a, like a mattress. It's the same density or the same um, compression rate all the way around. So it's not harder or softer anywhere. It's all one density. This midsole right here, you can see has this kind of gray section that's cut into it. And this is called a medial post. So that's on the arch side of the foot. And that harder post right there doesn't compress when the foot turns inward. So that's going to support somebody who has a low arch the same way that this shoe with that guide rail has. So that guide rail is essentially a medial post helping to support the arch side of the foot. So when you go to a store and you're looking for a shoe to do some running in or walking or just a lot of linear activity, you want to be able to know what type of foot shape you have, what your alignment looks like by using that tall, that tall full way uh, mirror. Um, but you also want to be able to look at a shoe on the wall and say, you know, what type of shoe is this? And again, you have to look at the foam on the inside edge of the shoe. Does it have a support feature or a structure piece built into it to help support the arch? Again, if it has the structure in it and you have a low arch, that's a good fit. And as long as the shoe feels good when you try it on, there should be no break in at all. Whether you have a high arch foot, low arch foot, if a shoe fits properly, there's no break in needed whatsoever. More importantly though, if you have a high arch foot, we don't need any stability because your foot's already stable like a tripod. So that foot that doesn't absorb shock, that really high arch stable foot, only needs cushioning. So cushioning is very important for a high arch foot. Like we just said, a low arch foot needs stability, right? We know the foot's gonna turn this way, but a high arch foot lands so firmly and it doesn't turn much that it needs lots of soft foam under the foot to absorb the impact force that your body is gonna put into the shoe. Now, one of the challenges that our industry has <clears throat> is that they all have an insert that comes inside of their shoes. And this insert is removable um, and you can actually put different types of inserts in. I'm sure you guys have seen gel inserts and you can see them at the pharmacy and so forth. Uh, but this particular insert is a foam insert or what we call a sock liner. And it looks like it has a little bit of an arch to it um, where that it would support the arch. In fact, they even put a little graphic on there showing that it's got some support. Here's the challenge that I, I like to um, ask of you. If you take your finger and press on this arch, you can see that it doesn't really do anything. It's not supporting the foot, the structure of the foot. And then when you look inside the shoe, it's basically just a board. There's no arch support in any sneaker made right now. So if you truly want to support the arch from the ground up, the best way to do that is with an orthotic device that a foot doctor makes or a firm custom footbed that has kind of a shank in it. So this does not collapse. I can press on this as hard as I can, and this brings the ground up to the foot to help aid in that alignment. So while shoes have that roll bar built in, or that, that post, if you will, that we talked about, the guide rail, it doesn't necessarily support the underneath side of the foot. So somebody with a major alignment problem would need to have a true orthotic or something nice and firm like this product here to help support the medial side of the foot. So when we think it's time to select the right shoe for us, we know that either we have a high arch, low arch, or no arch. And if we have a low arch or no arch, we know that we need a stability shoe that has some sort of support on the inside of the, uh, of the foot. And maybe that foot that's really collapsing inward could use an orthotic or a special footbed to help keep the alignment intact. But if you've got a high arch foot and you go to a shoe store and you see these two shoes on the wall, 
how do you know which one has support and which one doesn't? Well, again, we have to look on the inside of the arch side. And you can see this ASIC shoe says Duo Max. Well, Duo means two. So the inside of this shoe doesn't really have a big guide rail called out on it, nor does it have a big dark piece of uh, coloring here showing that it's got some support on the inside. But that harder foam is called Duo Max, and ASICs will put that on all of their shoes. In this case, this Nike shoe, this Pegasus shoe on the inside, doesn't have any writing, doesn't have any uh, harder foam built in. So this foam on the inside is the same hardness as it is on the outside. So it's very, very soft. And if a foot pronated without any structure here, it would just collapse over. So a neutral shoe for that foot that's like a tripod has no support in it. And you basically don't want to see anything on the inside of the shoe. If you've got a low arch or a flat foot, you want to look for Duo Max or some sort of coloring signifying that that shoe has support in it. Um, a lot of companies are taking their, their shoes with posts and they're actually not even coloring it in anymore. So in this case, you can see this New Balance shoe. Um, you can see the line right here and you can see where the line ends right here. This is a hard plug of foam, which is a support shoe. So you almost have to really look at the shoe and press on it to feel the differential. Um, it's hard to buy shoes for running or for walking without a little expert help. And that's why we here at Ted's know the difference between a neutral shoe and a stability shoe. Um, and understanding whether you pronate or not. Now keep in mind, we're talking about running here and walking, so anything that's in linear motion. You would not want to use this type of technology for a basketball shoe or anything for side to side because you'd roll an ankle. So <clears throat> from a linear perspective, treadmill, elliptical, a bike ride, walking, running, this type of technology is very important for support. Um, and if you're gonna go for hikes or uh, be off the trail, a lot of this technology is taken away because you need to have that uh, ability to feel the ground and let your foot be stabilized. We often feel that orthotics are almost more important than the technology in a shoe for hiking or uh, for sports like basketball or anything side to side, tennis, uh, because that helps keep that alignment in check. I hope this was helpful for you guys and uh, not too boring. And uh, if you ever have any questions, feel free to call me or you can have Mrs. Condat pop me an email. But I'm happy to help you, and uh, this has been a lot of fun. Take care.